Well, today on Nation, the Window Cleaners Podcast, we're going to talk about my love-hate relationship with roof cleaning. I love it so much and hate it so much at the same time, and I'm going to tell you the reasons why, coming up next on WCR Nation. What's going on, guys? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What is up? Welcome to WCR Nation, the Window Cleaners Podcast, even though we're talking about roof cleaning today. Uh, if you're new, we do talk all about business of services, uh, the service side, the business side of service businesses. There you go. So have a look around. We're in the 130-something episodes here, all 30 minutes long. Comes out live every Friday. Make sure to check that out. And uh, if you're one of the nation, one of the cool kids, you know who I'm talking about. Somebody who watches or listens to everything. And the most important thing is you call me and I put in your orders for you. Huh? Huh? Cheap plug. Then what's going on? It is because of you that I get to watch podcasts myself on a name brand computer. That was the last one somebody had mentioned. They asked if I was watching a podcast on a name brand computer. But thank you. If you want me to put your orders in for you, I would love nothing more than that. Truly, big or small, all of them, all of them. I want to be your rep. Let me be your rep, please. 862-312-2026. 862-312-2026. That's a sell. So call me, text me, whatever. Shop all night. Throw it in your cart. And then tell me, be like, yo, Jersey, what up? Put my order in. I love it. I love it when that happens. So high five to all you guys. Really do. Thank you, though. Uh, very much appreciate that for everybody who does order through me. I really do appreciate it. Um, and uh, go follow me everywhere that I'm supposed to tell you to follow me on uh, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, yeah, all those places. I post stuff there and do a little bit other videos there. But anyway. But yeah, so today we're talking about roof cleaning, which, by the way, somebody had wanted me to, and I went back in my... Uh, messages and I couldn't find who said it so you're watching I know you are comment on YouTube like it was me I told you roof cleaning I'm sorry I'm sorry I thought it was such a good idea but we don't do the how to's here we do the business side of it so I thought with roof cleaning how can we talk about roof cleaning when not talking about roof cleaning let me start by breaking my own rule and telling you what roof cleaning is just so we're all on the same page raise your hand if you know what roof cleaning is okay see almost all of you <laughs> How many teachers did that when you were little, right? Uh, So here's roof cleaning. I'm taking another sip here. Okay. So roof cleaning is very simple. Basically black lines, streaks, algae, lichens, moss, all that stuff on your roof. We can clean that off. Super easy, right? What it is is a chemical process. We use something called SH. They throw it around SH. and It's sodium hypochlorite mixed with water and then mixed with a surfactant. The surfactant is just a fancy term for soap. Pretty much, basically. I use Fresh Wash as a cheap plug. Uh, yes, we sell it. Uh, sodium hypochlorite, you have to buy through chemical supplier, in my opinion. It's just better stuff. Um, you can't buy that from us. You can't buy it online for most places. It's a corrosive chemical. So. Um, but uh, sodium hypochlorite, water, and a surfactant. I use Fresh Wash. Fresh Wash is awesome. Check it out. Or if you need some, let me know. But um, that is it. And then you take that chemical mixture you've made and you just water down the roof you water the roof as easy as that sounds you're like no there's gotta be it's not it's literally that easy literally that easy uh so if you haven't done roof cleaning uh it's something to think about a couple of the big things though that i wanted to talk about before i even get into my love and hate relationship is like the education the education does suck um, you have to create education for people who didn't even know this existed. Some of you who are listening didn't even know this existed before you saw this, right? So education is a little tough. You got to be like, hey, you know how your roofer told you you need a new roof? Well, we can clean it and you probably don't need a new roof for quite a while. Um, that part's very, very hard. So keep that in mind. Everything else on it is super, super easy. The one big thing to remember is if you have a pressure washer now, You're not using that to do a roof. I know that every single time I say that, somebody goes, well, yeah, but I have an extra, and I extra at roofs, and they turn out great. I don't agree. 
Uh, but that's cool. We can have separate opinions, right? You need to have a direct applicator, 12 volt pump, car battery, that kind of thing, right? Um, yes, there are gas pumps. They're awesome, more expensive. Uh, yes, there are air diaphragm pumps, uh, more expensive, uh, but great. I'm only talking about the 12 volt version because most of us have that version. All it is is a pump on a tank uh, with a hose and a gun and some tips. Very different tips than normal, very different gun than normal, even different hose than you would normally have on a pressure washer. It's a completely different setup, but we can get you set up with a starter kit for like $549, get the smart wash system, which is all of that put into a sexy package by RHG. We also sell that and that's like $2,500. But both of those are very awesome options. Anyway, again, 862-312-2026 is my number. Call me if you need questions on either of those systems or just questions in general. I know this episode is going to be more for people who already know what roof cleaning is as compared to people who need to know more about it. So I'm genuinely there for questions. Call me, text me, email me, jersey at windowcleaner.com for questions on roof cleaning itself. Okay. So as we start my love-hate relationship, understand that I do not do roof cleaning as my main service, even though I love it so much. I don't do it as my main service. And there is a lot of education, but you can get so much work out there. Now, if I focused only on that or created a company dedicated to just that, I feel like it would be super, 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 super successful because the most amount of money you'll make per hour is going to be roof cleaning, hands down, hands down. The most I ever made on any job ever per hour was roof cleaning. It was like 300 something dollars an hour. And that, no, that's not what you make all the time, but you definitely make, you know, a good, um, 200 ish an hour is pretty common. Um, I don't have the numbers in front of me. I could run reports and see what the actual is, but it is probably over 200, kind of faring on the bottom side. And here's why. The, the real reason, too, is not only is it fast to do your watering a roof, you're usually only doing one side, unless somebody requests all. It's always the north side is the worst. That's kind of where it comes. Different areas of the country, if you're dealing with moss, moss is a little bit trickier. Same thing, you apply it, the moss turns white, which is like flashes, and then eventually falls off the roof. No, you don't rinse. Don't rinse. Don't rinse. I'm telling you, don't rinse. Black streaks are disappear instantly. And uh, moss uh, and uh, lichens are just like moss where they turn white and then they fall off. So anyway, okay. The reason that I hate it, the number five love hate for roof cleaning for me is A, because it's easy. It is so easy. It is easier than anything else. Even if you can't figure out a window, how to clean a window, uh, it takes a little bit of time to show people how to fan, how to be fast and efficient, not skip anything, not miss anything, pressure washing. It's a little bit dangerous sometimes with some of the pressures and what you're spraying on and where to use pressure, where not to use pressure, that kind of thing. With roof cleaning, you're basically watering a roof. That, that's what I tell people. Like, we're like well, what, what do you do? You just water the roof. I put enough on the roof that I see the white because I'm putting the surfactant in there too, but I'm not having drips. I don't want drips because drips go into the gutter. If they're in the gutter, then it drips out and there's a big pain in the butt. I just want it to stick on the roof, just enough to stick on the roof and leave it there. Don't rinse. It's easy. Is the easiest thing you'll do all day, hands down. The hose is easy to handle. Everything is easy about it. Except the part, the reason that I hate that roof cleaning is because it seems to be that maybe once a month or something, there's some ridiculously difficult area on a roof that I have to get. Now, I moved to North Carolina. And for some reason in North Carolina, they love super steep, big roofs, which you would think would be something that would be in Wisconsin since we have so much snow, but it's quite the opposite. In Wisconsin, there's maybe a couple of roofs all year I wouldn't be able to walk, you know, comfortably. Here, everyone, every single roof I've ever done here in North Carolina is like that. And it's my area, I know. So if there's a dormer, that you can't quite spray to. Now, mind you, the equipment we sell, we sell, everybody sells the kind of equipment. You're getting a good 30 feet if there's no wind of distance, which can get you almost everywhere, except a dormer that you can't get to the spots on the dormer that you might want to get to. 
that's kind of some of the problem sometimes. So then you have to try to figure out, well, I can't go on the roof because now it's really slippery because I just put SH up there and the dying uh, algae, just, it's a slick. I'm not walking on there. Um, how am I going to get that? What angle am I going to, am I going to drop this up and then put the ladder back up to see if I can get the right angle? And that's a little bit of the pain in the butt. And I'm telling you, if every roof was flat with no dormers and you could reach it, it would just be a breeze. But that's why you get paid the big bucks. The number four reason that I have a love-hate relationship with roof cleaning is the equipment. I love the equipment. The equipment is sh just so easy. There's th these are the items in the in a roof cleaning system. You have a tank, a pump, a hose. You have the gun and tips. That's it. Well, and a battery. But that's that's like a 12 volt system. Super 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 easy. Super easy. If you throw your hose on a on a reel, it makes it even easier. But you don't even need that because the hose itself is not a braided hose. Uh, let me rephrase that. It's a poly braided hose in most cases, which is not like a wire braided hose. So in a pressure wash and there's a wire and that's why it's hard to wind up by hand. Anyway, but it's super, super easy. The equipment's cheap. Like I said, you can get a starter kit. doesn't come with a battery or a tank, but it's $549. Like that's dirt cheap. That's a window cleaning starter kit. You know, you can't even get into water fed for that. Super, super cheap. And it's easy to deal with. Batteries are quiet. Um, you know, as long as you make sure it's charged, it'll run for quite a while. Deep cycle battery is the way to go. A marine style deep cycle battery will allow a deeper draw, basically. So you're not going to jack up your battery by sucking it dry every day. Those are the kind that are used for like uh, trolling motors and all that where you have a softer pull on them. A constant slower draw as compared to like an engine where you're like, I need everything right now to crank this thing over. So you got to look at getting um, a deep cycle battery. But that's just easy. The equipment is, here's what I do. Like I said, I don't use a pressure washer for roof cleaning. I have this little kit. I take a 35 gallon tank. You could use a 50. 50 would be even better, I guess. Uh, there's a few times where I run a little shy uh, on solution for a roof, but um, I just put it on the back of my trailer, like next to my fill tank, my buffer tank. I put it next to my other chem tank, wherever. And then the pump mounts to the top of that with the battery. And that all just comes off to the hose. It's so easy. You throw it on there. So on a normal pressure washing trailer that I built, and again, you could build them completely different. We built trucks, trailers, all that like this, but I have a pressure washing unit that's plumbed into a buffer tank, always on a trailer. I run a buffer. And then that uh, has two reels. It has an incoming reel, which is garden hose reverse threaded. So I could just run it out, um, uh, tighten it into a house and start drawing. And then my pressure washing hose. But on a separate system, which I actually plumb uh, my uh, PVC from that incoming line into that. So I could fill on site if I need. But anyway, for another story is completely separate. That's its own dedicated thing. I have one reel for the hose on that and everything is in its own thing. Very, very quick, very easy. Reason I love it. The reason I hate the equipment is because the pumps go bad. You have to understand the SH, sodium hypochlorite or bleach or chlorine people call it or whatever, is corrosive. It will jack up everything. It ruins everything, everything. If you use a pole with it, it will ruin the pole. If you use a brush with it, it will ruin the brush. If you, it will just ruin everything because we're using stronger, um, you know, mixes, hotter mixes. It just ruins stuff. So you have to understand that the inside of a pump is going to go bad. And I've had pumps last me years and I've had pumps that last me nine months. It just depends on if you can flush it. It depends on what you're using and how often you're using it, all that. But those pumps go bad. So a trick is to have a backup pump always. Now, the systems that uh, I build with a simple pump, I use the, the, I put together the 549 roof cleaning kit because that's how I set up a new one. Super simple. But that pump that's on there is, uh, there's barbs that come out each side. One is in and one is out. All I need to do to swap that pump out 
is to undo those from each side, put the new pump on, screw them back in. Um, it doesn't happen enough to run quick connects or another leak point, but if it does happen and I'm halfway through a job, I can just swap it out. Uh, the terminal connectors on a battery, the way that I run them too, is uh, just wires come off the pump, and then I take uh, terminal connectors, which are the alligator styles, what I use, and I just um, like twist, you know, twist lock, tape them up, and that's how I go. So to swap out a pump takes me all of two minutes to swap out a pump, and I've had it happen on the job site. Um, I've had it happen more times before a job, which is nice because you're not, you know, you turn it on and nothing happens, and you're like. Or something happens and it's like like making weird noises and you're like, okay. So they're disposable. The pumps are disposable. It's not really what they're made for. Um, you can use ag, which is agriculture, like the uh, chemical sprayer pumps. And uh, they tend to last um, about the same from what I've tried. I've tried all different versions. Um, they say that there's uh, like uh, pumps out there that kind of last longer, but not that I've found. So I just expect it to be kind of a, a thing that I'm going to exchange out. Pumps are pretty cheap. They're just a 12-volt pump. Um, but be prepared that they're going to go bad. Now, if you're using a booster pump or a diaphragm pump or a, a air diaphragm pump or a gas-powered one, the pumps are a little different. So you're not running through pumps so much, but you're talking about thousands of dollars as compared to you know a couple hundred dollar pump. So something to kind of think about. The number three love-hate relationship I have with roof cleaning is that it's an add-on. It's great as an add-on. It is one of those things that I'm already at somebody's house. Now, we won't do roof cleaning. I've never upsold a roof uh, and done it that same day. I don't think so. Maybe I've done one because we had everything or whatever. But I'm not bringing it fully loaded and prepped with solution every single day. But I can upsell it when I'm at the job and say, hey, when we were doing your windows, I noticed you have a lot of dark spots on that roof. We could take care of that. It's called roof cleaning. You know, it's an algae or moss or whatever's up there. So explain what it is. We could take it off. It's super cheap. Uh, your price would be about $3.99 and it would take me, you know, just an hour to apply it and we'd be out of your hair. Super easy upsell. I'm not doing it on the same side, but it's a separate crew. And the reason you don't need to do it at the same time is that that is not going to affect anything else you do. So for the most part, if you spray, you're not going to mess up the house. Siding for house washes, you're not going to mess up the windows as long as you do it from a ladder uh, on the gutter line, which is what I do. Um, so you can be back anytime and it doesn't affect anything else. Really nice add-on though. When you're there, you can explain things. People look and they go, oh yeah, ah, I, we just need a new roof. That's That's probably 90% of the people that I tell them like, ah, we'd love to clean your roof. They go, yeah, I just, I need a new roof. Like you don't actually, you know, looking at it, none of the shingles are bent up. You know, we could clean it. You could get potentially another 10 years out of it. I'm not a roofer, but we do it a lot of times where this roof will look close to brand new when it's done. People are like, really? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of times your roof lasts longer than you think. It's just when it gets dark, that's what, and if you look into what is happening up there, yes, technically, the lime is getting eaten by the algae and the lime is part of the shingle and technically you lose granulars and granulars, granula, whatever, the little rocks, you lose that. So you can explain that that's what's happening up there, but when you see these ads out there, and you may be guilty, not even guilty, this may be the way you go, but you say your roof is covered in mold and it's attacking your roof and it's eating your roof. I think that that's a little far from the truth, but it's a pain point. And pain points, if you fear is a pain point. So I, I see why people do that, but but that's what's really happening. It's really, really easy sell. Uh, unfortunately, uh, on the that side of the sell, remember it's a little bit trickier to, to educate. You're gonna have to explain what's going on. But as an add-on, the downside is every roof I've ever done ever, I've done from a ladder. Now, if you're trying to get away from ladders, I totally understand. This, you can't get away from ladders because some people spray it from the ground. I think that that is not awesome because the SH that you have, the mix that you're making up, is made to kill biologic things, right? Algae, moss, lichens, that. Well, guess what's around your house? 
lots and lots of biologics. You have plants and bushes and shrubs and trees and everything. Okay, so if you're shooting it from the ground, you're going to have more mist. And now you're just going to have way more chasing, way more kind of trying to control your mist with uh, watering. And then you tend to burn things and it just doesn't work. I also like to be right up against the uh, roof line because I can see at a better angle. And I can get to almost every point that way. Most houses, every point, ladder is fine. I barely ever have to go up there. Like I said, there's dormers sometimes. But everything else is fine. You just can't get all the way up to the peak and tall roof sometimes from the ground. So you have to be on a ladder. So if you're trying to get away from a ladder, that's a downside. You just can't get away from that. But, yeah, still awesome. And my number two in the love-hate relationship with roof cleaning is the speed. The speed that you can clean a roof is ridiculous. Again, how long would it take you to grab the hose and just water the roof? Minutes. It takes minutes. Well, that's roof cleaning. Set up, minutes. Uh, doing the action, minutes. Now, you'll have uh, a, a waterer going. It'll be the same amount of time. There's a little bit of upkeep with that. But it takes you, I can be in and out of a typical house, roof cleaning, in about an hour. That's set up, tear down, talking, whole, whole thing in an hour. And our minimum... Starts at $399 uh, and goes up to thousands, thousands of dollars. Now, for the more um, longer, the bigger jobs, you'll be there a little bit longer, especially when you have multi uh, pitch roofs and angles. And, you know, we have a house that we do that has eight master bedrooms, which I don't get, but each one has a master bath, and each one is its own like shape. So the roof contours that you go up there and it's, you can't, you're up there for a while moving the ladder because there's so many different angles and things. So the north side ends up being like a lot of the house actually, you know. So it's quick, super, super quick. The downside to that is you always have to have two people. Now, if you want to write hate mail or comment, on YouTube's shirt, certainly do that and tell me, yeah, I do one person, I put up a sprinkler or whatever. You can technically do that, I guess, but you're playing with fire. And the reason is what we talked about before. If you're not watering everything the whole time, that mist, that spray, you may shoot up to an angle and it'll shoot over the roof. Wherever that juice hit, you're burning some plants. And it's expensive. If you've, <laughs> if you've ever burned a lawn at plants or anything, it adds up super, super quick. So don't burn stuff. It's very easy to do so. How we do it is I send two guys. One guy is the, the applicator and one guy is the waterer. The waterer, as soon as the truck stops, he gets out, hooks up the garden hose and starts spraying all over. And he's going to start on one side of the house where the other guy is going to start. But that guy goes in, knocks if we're talking, makes sure that people know we're there. It sets everything up, gets a ladder set. The other guy's been watering the whole time. He starts spraying. The water guy's watching too what he's doing to see if there's any overspray or what's happening. Goes to the next side, goes past it, rewaters everything. When the applicator is done, comes down off his ladder, winds all the hose up, puts everything back on, puts the ladder away, goes and says goodbye to Mrs. Jones. The water is still watering everything everything saturating the downspouts where the downspouts come out um doing all of that and then when the other guy the applicator's like okay well, everything's done let's go back to the truck then that guy pulls puts the hose away they get in the truck and go now when you're always sending two people the the water's job is the most important job on the site because you can burn stuff i haven't burned stuff in a long time so it's not something that you do regularly but you can if you're not paying attention the only thing that I've seen burn is underground gutters. So underground gutters have a big drain uh, tube that goes into the yard or goes somewhere. Well, some of them are leach tubes. They have holes cut in them so that the water can leach through the ground and then go to somewhere else. You're not putting all of it in. The downside to that is if there's any SH that runs through there, you burn a line in the grass. Usually people are cool with it if it happens. Um, I have a landscaper that I can call on. Very, very, very seldom does anything happen. But um, that's one possibility. 
that's why you don't want things to drip off the roof. The other thing is, is that um, some people bag the gutters. You don't have to do that if you're not letting it drip. Uh, but I tell homeowners every single time, say, hey, so everything's applied and the solution's up on the roof. Now, every day, twice a day, whenever you think about it, come outside and just water by the downspouts. And that will help the salt water when it comes off your roof. So here's what happens. You leave it on the roof. The sun breaks down the SH. Okay. Now it's just salt water. Salt on a roof isn't bad necessarily until it rains and it comes down off the roof. And now you have salt water. When you have a lot of rain, it doesn't affect anything because of dilution, right? It's the concept that if you put a drop of gas in a 55 gallon drum of water, you could drink it. It'd be fine. Same concept. But sometimes it just rains and it goes away and you have a high levels of concentration and it burns because salt on a lawn would burn anyway. Salts of the earth. So letting a homeowner know just for a week, just when you remember it, go out there and water, saturate it, make a nice puddle there so that if anything does come down and catch it in the water. And you're usually fine. So burning stuff is not a problem if you do it right. So keep that in mind. And the number one love-hate relationship that I have or thing that I love slash hate about roof cleaning is number one for love is money. Money. There's so much money. When you start looking at roofs, look at the north side. The best house to go to is the one that the front door faces the north because the front of the house looks the worst. In my house, my house actually faces south. So when you walk up to my house, it never looks bad. But the back of my house when you're driving up looks bad. So those are the number one things. People would love, when you start seeing dirty roofs, they are absolutely everywhere. It's an untapped market for roof cleaning. It is money galore, more money than you make hourly than anything else. It is just a money haven for it. Downside for the money is like, if there wasn't so much education needed, it would just be a, an ATM. It just would be. The money is crazy. So definitely think about adding it if you haven't. Uh, the number one hate that I have, I'm going to lose man points for this, but it's, it's the smell and bleaching out your clothes. Like those two things, because when the solution gets on you, it stinks and old bleach stinks. It just stinks. And I'm not the type of person who wants to stink. I don't stink, I guess. Uh, so that drives me crazy. It drives me crazy. Some people say it smells like money. That may be true. But the smell drives me bonkers. And then the other thing that comes with the smell, because you get it on you, is that bleaching of clothes. Like, I've got it down now where everything we wear doesn't bleach. The, the pants, khakis, um, it, po uh, polyester right? But yeah. Polyester and the shirts we wear, um, the dye and Nile dye shirts that I'm having brain fart. Uh, those shirts don't bleach out, but either do like the Columbia fishing shirts. You know, if it's all polyester, I think it's polyester. They don't bleach out. So, and I wear a polyester, like crocodile Dundee hat, you know, like the full brim around, but you still like your socks or shoes or or if you got gloves or towels, I've had like rags, you know, if uh, something, you know, get on you or you're sweating in the middle of summer, you got a rag, that thing gets bleached. Everything gets bleached out. Remember, bleach kills everything. But when I open my wallet, it seems to be worth it. So something for you to think about. That's my love-hate relationship with uh, roof cleaning Tell me your love-hate relationship. What do you love the most? What do you hate the most? Comment down on YouTube. But most importantly, this is not me blowing smoke. Buy your supplies through me, please. I'm going to give you a code here. If you buy your supplies through me and you tell me the code, I'm going to give you 5% off uh, and free shipping. And the code is money. If you tell me that, the code of money, you're going to get 5% off your order. Now, you have to have me put the order in. I say this every week and people, they have the code and they don't listen to this part, but I have to put the order in. If you put it in and go, oh, uh, by the way, I forgot to tell you money. Or um, you say, oh, I put the order in last night uh, online. Uh, the code was money. Can you give me a discount? No, I can't. It's not how it works. It's not how it works. You have to call me. Hey, why aren't you calling me? It's like a high five, man. Uh, let me put those orders in. But that's how you get it. 
money is the code 862-312-2026 is the number call me text me whatever let me know what kind of fancy um name brand thing i can buy after putting your order in i always love to hear it and uh yeah until next week go out there and be epic